It is one of the world's biggest and most ambitious scientific experiment in human history. From revealing what happened in the moments after the Big Bang, to investigating the fundamental nature of matter, the Atlas experiment could unlock many secrets of the universe, even of our existence itself. Everything around us is matter. We are made of matter. Matter on Earth is atoms. Atoms are electrons orbiting around the nucleus, which in turn is merely made up of protons and neutrons. Inside these, we find quarks. All these particles were created at the birth of the universe, a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, about 13.7 billion years ago. By recreating conditions that existed just after the Big Bang, scientists hope to answer the crucial question, why was matter created in the first moments of the universe, making our existence possible? To answer this question, scientists need to understand why particles have mass and what the state of matter was just after the Big Bang. Today, our best guess is described in the so-called standard model. It answers questions about the structure of matter and about the fundamental forces that hold it together. However, it can only incorporate three out of the four forces that control the behavior of all matter, namely electromagnetism, the weak force, and the strong force. The fourth force, gravity, is still the odd one out. The gravitational force, the most familiar in our everyday lives, has proved very difficult to describe. For many years, this has been one of the most difficult problems in theoretical physics. Perhaps discoveries at the LHC will elucidate this mystery. To make a full confirmation of the standard model, scientists would have to find the particle that explains why particles have mass. Scientists predict the existence of a particle that would do exactly that. They have called this missing particle the Higgs boson after the British scientists Peter Higgs, who in 1964 first suggested that it must exist. If scientists find the Higgs boson, they can finally start understanding how mass is created. Physicists predict that the Higgs boson will disintegrate into recognizable particle pairs immediately after its creation. However, only high-energy collisions can make the Higgs appear. Some theorists also believe this new experiment will reveal a new fundamental physical symmetry referred to as supersymmetry. Still, other theories predict it might point to the existence of extra dimensions of the universe as we know it. One purpose of the ATLAS experiment is to capture data that will allow scientists to find the Higgs particle. From the surface, you see hardly anything. The 27-kilometer-long LHC and the ATLAS detector are buried deep underground, at depths ranging from 50 to 175 meters. The LHC accelerates beams of particles until they almost reach the speed of light. Two beams traveling in opposite directions circle the LHC 11,000 times every second. At temperatures of minus 271.25 degrees Celsius, or 1.9 degrees Celsius from absolute zero, a total of 1,800 superconducting underground magnets keep the beams on track. When the particles are brought to collision, a temperature equal to 100,000 times that of the sun is generated. This is the temperature prevailing a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. Relics of the early universe will spring fleetingly to life again. Four gigantic instruments called particle detectors are positioned in large caverns along the LHC accelerator. The particles will be made to collide inside the detectors and they will track, sort and analyze the data produced. ATLAS is the largest of the four. 
The 46-meter-long and 25-meter-high Atlas detector required extraordinary feats of engineering and collaborative work. It is one of the largest, most complex scientific machine ever built. New materials and technologies had to be invented for high-speed data acquisition or to create support structures able to be both light and strong. 37 governments put their faith in the hands of thousands of scientists. Over nearly 15 years, an increasing collaboration of scientists from all across the globe debated, investigated, analyzed, invented, and finally built millions of components that would constitute the Atlas detector. Particle energies are measured by a calorimeter. Because a large number of different families of particles are created from the collision, there are several types of calorimeters. In the case of Atlas, these are either arranged as barrels placed around the center or at the end of the detector. The 3,000-ton tile calorimeter is composed of steel and a special material that lights up when particles pass through it. The tile calorimeter was built in 14 different locations worldwide. It surrounds a second calorimeter that consists of lead and liquid argon, which is cooled to minus 180 degrees Celsius. This is known as the electromagnetic calorimeter. It specifically measures the energies of electrons and photons. Muons are specific subatomic particles that appear from the collisions of protons. They pass through the electromagnetic calorimeter and reach the outermost layers where they are recorded by the muon detector. If it were laid out flat, the muon detector would be around the size of seven football fields. Close to the heart of Atlas, several components called the inner detector are designed to measure the trajectories of passing charged particles within an accuracy of close to one hundredth of a millimeter. The inner detector measures the momentum of each charged particle. It consists of concentric layers of tracking detectors with the highest precision detectors closest to the collision point. The pixel detector uses advanced silicon technology that provides excellent radiation hardness. It is made up of 80 million pixel sensors in order to detect individual particle tracks produced in the collision. Outside the pixel detector is the semiconductor tracker where the precise tracking of charged particles continues using layers of silicon microstrip sensors. Outside the semiconductor tracker, the final element of the inner detector is the transition radiation tracker. It is composed of 350,000 tubes filled with gas and coiled wires. Inside the transition radiation tracker are several detectors built out of silicon and divided into millions of thin strips and tiny pixels. Throughout much of the Atlas detector, there is an intense magnetic field. This is produced by passing current through more than 80 kilometers of superconducting cables housed within a large toroid structure. This enables Atlas to maintain one of the world's largest volumes of intense magnetic field. The construction is finished with the addition of further layers of detectors for measuring particles that reach the edges of Atlas. In reality, a scientist will not be allowed to walk through the open detector, but in this case it illustrates the sheer scale of the Atlas detector. Strangely, it takes a gigantic scientific project to enter this unimaginably small world. Zooming down in scale from a person to one of these particles is like shrinking the diameter of the whole Earth to the size of a coin and then shrinking that coin by the same amount again. In 1997, excavation began of the cavern that would host it. There were five years of excavation and building the cavern. To dig the enormous underground holes for particle detectors, over half a million cubic meters of Earth had to be extracted. New techniques of civil engineering had to be developed. In 2003, after six years of work, the cavern, as tall as the 10-story cathedral, was ready to host Atlas. 
Atlas was assembled one large piece at a time, each multi-million dollar part lowered into the cavern. An 8,000 ton giant of unprecedented size and complexity. The Atlas experiment has eight of the world's biggest electromagnets. At 120 tons, each barrel toroid coil is as heavy as two loaded 737 aircrafts. The installation started with the first coil reaching the bottom of the shaft. It was a spectacular sight, like a spaceship docking to its station. It took an hour to tilt the coil level again. Lowering it the last meter to the platform was a delicate operation. The last centimeters were the toughest on the nerves of the crew. The same process had to be repeated several times when finally it was tilted and lowered into place. Now, we can finally witness the Atlas detector measuring the particles from the colliding protons. As two particles collide, hundreds of new particles are formed from the energy of the collisions. These collisions occur 800 million times a second, generating large volumes of data, hundreds of megabytes every second. To treat this massive amount of data, physicists, together with experts from industry, built new computing applications. Elaborate computer algorithms sift through this avalanche of data in real time to decide which cases appear worthy of being recorded for full analysis later. Of the 800 million collisions occurring per second, only about one contains interesting data that might lead to new discoveries. That fraction is still so large that when recorded, it is the equivalent of 27 CDs per minute. If all the data from Atlas would be recorded, it would fill 100,000 CDs per second. This would create a stack of CDs that would reach to the moon in three months. The data acquisition and trigger subsystem is designed to have around 3,000 computers running in parallel, each with the equivalent of eight processors. It has close to 30,000 software applications running simultaneously. Atlas works through computers located around the world and connected in a global grid to distribute all the accumulated data. It allows hundreds of research centers and universities from all over the world to analyze the data, but also share their own data and resources. Distributed groups can now work together in ways that were previously impossible. To operate the Atlas detector and computing system, 600 people are needed, working 24-7, although only about half of them at CERN. Those located elsewhere can also fix any problems that might occur via computers from where they are to the detector itself. Atlas's material costs amounted to 541 million Swiss francs and involved 2,500 scientists from almost 200 universities in 37 countries around the world. About 20% of all experimental particle physicists worldwide were involved with ATLAS. It took nearly 20 years to complete. This experiment is the culmination of a lifetime effort for many scientists. The dedication ceremony on the 21st of October 2008 signaled the end of nearly 20 years of development. Atlas is now entering its operational phase. For the next 15 to 20 years, it will serve science and mankind through an increasing collaboration of scientists from all corners of the world. A new pooling of knowledge and talent which may well bring our knowledge about ourselves and our world into a new and very different light.